Benvenuto to the finale of the Euro 2020 show. What a show we have lined up for you, just especially for a fantastic game ahead of us. We're ready for the final, hey? The final episode for the big final. It's England against Italy, Italy. in the showdown. And we've got some great guests today to walk you through this bumper last show. Absolutely, we have in the studio, Singapore captain Harris Harun will be in the house to take us through the games. Yep, and we also have a coach to talk us through some of the tactics, and it's none other than Singapore legend Aide Iskander. And we also have a tennis star who is also a massive football fan. We have Shahid Alam in the house to take us through fantasy football. And one of our ladies' superstars, Pris Tan. She's right now down in Australia representing the country. She'll be talking us through her team of the tournament. And of course, what would the Euro 2020 show be without giveaways, right? Of course, this week we have a bumper bunch of giveaways to give to you, including some signed merchandise. We have signed gloves from Donnarumma, the Italian goalkeeper, but of course the one that really caught my eye is the signed boots from Kylian Mbappe himself. You can send a chance to win all of this. We also have... We have a Tony Cruz Real Madrid jersey we'll be giving out and a Thomas Müller Bayern Munich jersey. So you've got to stay with us through the show to have a chance of winning all these prizes, right Ash? That's right guys, Forza, let's go! Let's have a look now at the semi-final results of the Euros. Now some very interesting games that really caught our eye as well, including that 1-1 draw. Of course, Spain, I felt dominated the game, but Italy came out to win on penalties. And of course, the one that James today is very happy about, and I'm sure many England fans, Harris is smiling here, it is the England win over Denmark, which takes them through, of course, the final. Let's have a look at the pundits' predictions. I know we, me and Jurich, we predicted Denmark, you know, we had our reasons, you know, coming through the emotions, but the rest of our pundits did a very good job as well, I think I would say. I think Durich is Scottish because he just <laughs> supports whoever is playing England. Maybe it's Durich. He, right? Maybe? Yeah, I don't know. Well, of course, uh, we are on the way to the finals, but what a road it has been all the way at Wembley. 60,000 fans will be watching Italy and England, but you know, such exciting times and we all will, we definitely peeled, um, our eyes will be peeled on Sunday night. Um, and today we have a very special guest in the studio to discuss the finals with us. It is Singapore captain, Paris Harun. Thank you so much, Harris, for joining Thank us. You. Thank you for having, us, for having me. Yeah. So you're back in Singapore, hey? Yes. <laughs> how, how does it feel to be back home and, and uh, playing again in the, in it the feels, SPL? It feels great. Um, after a long time away, you know, to see familiar faces and closer to the fam being closer to yeah. the family. So I'm really looking forward to this new challenge. But unfortunately, you missed out on the last round of, of qualifiers, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, I was away because uh, of personal reasons. Yeah. So I couldn't join the team. So I think the boys did... Uh, I mean, had a good experience, so we hopefully we can learn from this uh, experience. Yeah. yeah, hopefully some of the players that stood in yeah. get some experience to support. Yeah. Lion City Sailors, so have you joined Singapore's yeah. new <laughs> Real Madrid. final, final, <laughs> finally champions? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we are, that's our target, you know, ultimately. Uh, we have a good team, lots of good players, so um, it's about getting the results on the pitch now. So hopefully come end of the season, we'll be celebrating, yeah. yeah hopefully, yeah. we're looking forward to that for yeah. sure. So, Italy and England, let's take a look first at, at how they got there. Yeah, of course, yeah. That game I was talking about earlier with Italy and Spain. And to be honest, Harris, if you watched the game, you yeah. would see that Italy were a little bit, uh, you know, callous in the back line. Yeah. Spain were dominating the possession, which they're so good at. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, Bonucci said that this was the hardest game he actually played in his entire career. What do you yeah. make? You must have watched the game. And of course, this fantastic goal by Chiesa. Yes, yes, I did. I think uh, Italy had... A Great build-up, I mean, great tournament uh, so far until they met Spain in the semi-finals. So I think they finally met their match, you know, so... But uh, I think they did really well in the penalty shootout to, to get through and uh, Spain were a bit unlucky. But uh, I think their team teamwork, their spirit got them through. So I think they're, they're going to have a good, good tournament. Yeah. And of course for you, you know, you're a professional player yourself yeah. in these high, you know, tempo situations. How are they feeling going into these kind of tournaments, you know? It's uh, nerve-wracking, you know, yeah. and uh, you know that there's not much room for, for mistakes, especially in a, in a short tournament like this. So I think Italy has been, in my opinion, the best team in the tournament so far, and they deserve uh, every bit of, uh, of the, the limelight, the praise that they're getting, and, and I think they're going to make it a, a, a tough and close final. Yeah. 
Going back, now let's talk about Morata, right? I mean, yeah. a lot of people were saying, you know, lack of confidence, he didn't score, yeah. but he came back at the end. Yeah. What, do you, what, do you think of, what do you think of his uh, tournament? I think a lot of people have been harsh, harsh on Morata. I think he's, he's come up with the goods when, when needed. I, mean, I think he's a bit unlucky also to be dropped for, for a couple of the games. Uh, of course, it's unfortunate that he missed the penalties, yeah. but I think, uh, I mean, if he had started more games and you know, had coach, the coach had more faith in him, I think he would have, you know, made a difference, but, but uh, uh, I think he will only get better, yeah. I think for Spain though, coming into this tournament, if you had offered them semi-final, yeah. I think that would, they would have marked that as yeah. an achievement, right? They've been yeah. going through a bit of a, a rebuilding. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Um, and when you look at the young players, Pedri, Sarabia, these yeah. guys, yeah. They, they've definitely got a platform to build on, right? Yeah, definitely. I think the, the likes of uh, Pedri, they, they have big shoes to fill, you know, mm. from Iniesta, from Xavi. Uh, the golden generation that won the Euros and, yeah. and the World Cup. So, so I think they're trying to, to build, build on that with this new generation. They have promising players. So, so with, uh, with them getting to the semi-final, I think it bodes well for them. Yeah. So pro probably in the coming tournaments, the next World Cup and the Euros, you know, they'll, they'll be there. Yeah. Mm. Okay. But back to Italy. I guess Absolutely, we've got to talk yeah. about the team I'm that's going on, right? I mean, yeah. I know, Ash, we were talking, you said what's impressed you throughout this tournament is their, is their team spirit, right? Absolutely, them coming together. And obviously, they didn't qualify for the last World Cup. Yeah. So Mancini did a fantastic job bringing this team together. Yeah. And honestly, they play like they're really having fun, you know? I mean, you yeah. saw Kellini in the last yeah. penalty shootout. Like, young kids, right? Yeah, I mean, just look at this picture, how yeah. the togetherness, the, the, the team spirit, you know? I, I love everything about the Italians, I think, from the way they dressed. The way, the oh, way, yeah, the coaches stylish. were really, yeah, the way, good. the way, the way they sing the national anthem with so much passion and drive, you know, everything about them is just amazing. So I feel that I, I don't know, it's going to be tough, but uh, yeah, yeah, I think so I think they deserve something from this tournament, yeah. especially with Spinozola out, right? Because yeah. he actually did celebrate with the team as well. Yeah. I mean, imagine injured, but still the team really needs you. But do you think you know his 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 uh, disappearance or his loss uh, has impacted the team. I think he's, he's actually a little bit of an un unsung hero for the Italians. Mm. Uh, probably before this tournament, nobody really heard of, of yeah, him. Tw 28 years old. 28 years yeah. old, yeah. Suddenly everyone where, where has he been? Him. Yeah, where <laughs> has he been? He's been? But he's had an amazing tournament until he got injured. So um, I, I think the Italians, you know, knowing their, their drive, their, their team togetherness, I think they want to do this for him as well. He's played a big role, a big part, especially in the quarterfinal in Belgium where, where yeah. he blocked the, the, yeah. the, the yeah. goal from, a uh, mm. sure goal from Lukaku, yeah. you know, so uh, <laughs> I think Amazing. they want to do this for him as well. Yeah. Absolutely. So this mm. is the age-old question we're discussing. <laughs> and you know, the fans have really gone out there in Wembley and put out some really cool banners, one which really caught my eye. Stop putting pineapple on pizza. How is what do you think? I have pineapple on my pizza, <laughs> so no I problem for me. I thought you ever said no political statements at the game. Exactly. This is a political statement right there. Yeah. I have to say, I also noticed this guy smoking at Wembley. I don't no, know. No, this is not going to be allowed in sports <laughs> hub, <I'm sure. laughs> Happening as well. But okay, so we've talked about, about Italy, but we just want to, Harris, we asked you, who yes. are the three players that you think in the final are the ones that may yeah. swing this game? Mm -hmm. So talk us through, because a lot of people are talking about the defence, but you've really gone for the midfield. Yeah, the reason I chose the midfield or the attacking players is because I think both defence, uh, particularly Italy, have probably the best defence in the in the tournament, even though England only conceded one goal uh, till, till the final. Uh, so I think it's up to the, the front players, the midfield players, you know, who are going to make the difference in this final. So that's why I choose these three players. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, jo Jorginho is the, the deepest player amongst these three and, and he's a little bit underrated even when, when he's playing in uh, Chelsea. And, uh, I think Chelsea, he gets overshadowed by Kante. Yes, definitely Kante is well. there to help him a little bit here and there. Yeah. But I think he keeps this Italian team moving, you know, his, yeah. his, his ball retention, his ball you know, movements. Or with and without the ball, I think it just keeps things ticking for them and that's why they are so so um, efficient and, and, and flowing this team. So I think he's really important and integral to, 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 to the Italian side. And uh, Chiesa, he reminds me a little bit of uh, Thomas Muller okay. who, from uh, Germany. Uh, See, not I'm, really older, I'm older than you, he reminds me of his dad. <laughs> oh, and, and Enrico, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I watched him play before. Yeah. But the reason is he's not so eye catching. He's not skillful, yeah. not a Neymar, or you know. But he's efficient, yes. and he gets the job done. You know, and yeah. he scored the goal mm. to get them get them to to the final. And, and Insignia is, I think, the team's playmaker. Cuts yeah, inside, absolutely. you know, diminutive, 
makes trouble for for the opposition and and let's let's uh, the others uh, get in space and make things happen. Maybe the, if they need a, a spark. Yeah, mix things happen. Him. Yeah, basically yeah. for for the Italian team. So so I think these three will be very integral to to how they play. Yeah. So having talked about Italy, now let's talk about the winners. Oh, um, liking so, the confident so guys. England against Denmark. I assume you watched the game, how's yeah. So, <laughs> you know, the, the first 30 minutes, a little bit cagey. Denmark were on top. Yeah. Uh, they, they seemed to be manhandling England a little bit in, in the midfield. Uh, Hoybeer was all over the place. Yeah. And then, of course, a bit of a cheap free kick, but they Damsgaard, who perhaps wouldn't have even have been playing in this yeah. tournament yeah. if not for Eriksen injured. The first free kick goal in the entire tournament. Yeah. Which, which is incredible. So, you know, when you look at Denmark, what, what impressed you about them in this game? How were they able to, to, to seize the initiative so, mm. so easily? I don't know. I think like Ash mentioned, it's been an emotional tournament for them yeah. since what happened to, to Ericsson. So I think that spurred them on. That was mm. crucial crucial for them. And, you know, when they got to the quarterfinal, I had this feeling that they might just go on to win it. You know? mm. But, yeah, they met England and, and they are out. But... Uh, you have to give them credit. I think it's not easy, especially with this uh, format where you have yeah. to travel lots of miles, yeah. you know, uh, to different cities. So I think that took a toll on them against England, uh, having and the, the extra time. They yeah, had the, the game going game. To, yeah. to extra time. So uh, a little bit unfortunate for them, but I think they had a great tournament. So so I think they, they can they have something to build on. Yeah. Yeah. They they although you know England kind of started to to take control of the yeah. game as soon as England equalised, yeah. what was noticeable was Denmark using all five of their subs yeah. pretty yeah. early in the second half. Um, yeah. and, and really when Damsgaard went off in particular, they kind of, Dolberg went off, they kind yeah. of surrendered the initiative yeah. Yeah. a little bit. And you got the feeling from there that, that they, were, they were hanging on yeah. and perhaps playing for penalties, right? But England came to the fore. Yeah. Um, what do you think was the key for England in, in kind of getting back into the, into the game? I think England... Uh, compared to previous generations or the so-called golden generation, they're more of a team right now. Yeah. You, know, you can see the players are uh, playing together uh, even though they come from uh, different Premier League clubs. Uh, they are in the course, uh, in this course together they want to get something for England. So you can you can see them. They didn't really have I think, an eye-catching start but they were efficient. Mm -hmm. Like they, met, they got one year wins, they got, got all the way to the semi-final and got the job done. And I think it's a big boost that they play m lots of their games at Wembley. Yeah. So six right, out of seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah six yeah. out of seven. And the wow. final is going to be at Wembley. So, so yeah, they have huge a advantage. Yeah. yeah. Of course, there was a, a period, the second half, really, where Kasper Schmeichel was a was a one man yeah. wall. Yeah. He pulled off a couple of really world class saves, particularly yeah. from from Harry Maguire. Yeah. But in the end, he he was breached, mm. and it was a penalty that did it. And and a bit of controversy on this one, eh? Yeah, it is. I think, <laughs> I mean, the, in the in the heat of the game, it, it's a little bit. Uh, you can say it's soft and touch and go. You know, a tackles will say it's a penalty, and defenders say will say it's soft. Uh, but the rules are rules. You know, it doesn't matter if it's in the first minute or in the 120th minute. I think if it it's con there's contact and it's uh, sufficient for him, you know, to go down or gives him a. Chance. Yeah, right. chance. chance. Yeah, chance. Yeah. So I think it's a penalty. So, so there's no, for me, there's mm. no discussion on that. Yeah. No, there's a couple of things that stand out for me on this when people were talking about it the last couple of days. One was that if you'd watched the game up to that point, the referee yeah. was giving quite a few relatively soft yeah. fouls. As I mentioned earlier, even the Denmark free kick they mm -hmm. scored yeah. from was yeah. relatively soft. So there's already kind of a warning in there as mm -hmm. a defender. Mm. He perhaps could have given Kane a penalty earlier. There was, mm. a, there was an argument there. So, so that... You know, that was definitely one thing. And there is clearly contact. Yeah. The question is whether it's enough to go down. But mm. my feeling on this one is it's one of those where if the referee doesn't give it, VAR will not give, give it. it yeah. mm. But if the referee gives it, VAR, because there's contact, yeah. they can't really overturn it yeah. in that situation. But there were a few theories <laughs> about <laughs> who was manning the VAR booth yeah. on the day. But, yep. I mean, for yourself, as you say, you know, is it, is it flip a coin or... or which, you think it should have been or it shouldn't have been? I mean, it's, it's a lot of controversy with VAR now. But uh, for me, uh, there's no doubt it was a penalty. Yeah. Okay. See, I like guests like this. I like guests that understand yeah. so how <laughs> football works. <you> know? <laughs> the audacity. Anyway, back to this. Um, there's been a lot of talk as well about the lasers, right? That were shown at uh, Schmeichel. So, 
people are saying that this is going to happen in Donnarumma, <laughs> like a rave, an actual <laughs> rave. So hopefully it doesn't get down to this because that's going to be hilarious. But the, the funny thing is when you see it, Kasper Schmeichel doesn't, it doesn't seem to hit him in the eye. Yeah. It seems Strange, to be on his cheek yeah. and he, it doesn't seem to affect him. I mean, yeah. Exactly, yeah. It was it, I, Darren him. Anderton was our guest on the last show and, and, and I heard him say yesterday that it's the worst penalty he's ever seen Kane take. <laughs> in all the penalties, but at the end of the day, yeah. the ball's in the net, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. I think Kane is a natural born uh, goal scorer. So at the moment, uh, the, the moment that he took the penalty, he reacted. Yeah. Mm. If he didn't react, I think the defender probably got, got I, it. Got I think he might have been saved by how bad the penalty actually was. Yeah. Because I think if he puts it in the corner and Schmeichel it, guesses the yeah. right way and saves it, yeah. he probably pushes it out. out right? Yeah, so the ball came back to him. You know, and, and he just had to, to, to put it, do his job basically yeah. to put it in the back of the net. So, uh, yeah, that's Harry Kane for you. You get goals, whether it's penalty or not. Yeah. And, and from that point on, Denmark really didn't look like they had much left in the tank, right? England were able to use their bench. Yeah. Um, and in fact, a lot of people didn't realize, the commentators didn't pick up on it, but Denmark actually played the entire second half of extra time with 10 men because they had used all six subs. Yeah. One of their subs went off injured mm -hmm. and, and England were, they were just, there was one point they went, I think three and a half minutes mm -hmm. of just that, passing yeah. the yeah. ball around. Uh, beautiful exercise yeah. in game management, <laughs> right? Training match for them. But I think, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the legs had gone for Denmark, you know, yeah. the, they, they just didn't have fuel in the tank. And uh, England, I think, being backed by the, the home crowd, uh, I think Wembley had 60,000 fans. Yeah. So I think they just had to, to hang on and, and push through. So Denmark, uh, it was a little bit difficult from that point on for them, yeah. So the England fans celebrating. Yeah, unfortunately for this lady, hmm. she, she called in sick actually to attend this game, but she was, I guess she was exposed right on camera, Nina Faruqi. But you know what? You know what? Good on you, girl. I, I know how it feels to not you know, want to attend a game just for work. I, I guess, hopefully, if they win, you know, she'll be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, she can always say she was at the game when she's on the unemployment mm. line signing <laughs> up. But the England fans, being England fans, you know, stopping traffic through the city yeah. and, and everything else that they do. Unfortunately, there is an investigation again. They're booing the national anthem uh, mm, again. Yeah, and hopefully, very cool. Hope, I'm cool hoping they don't boo the Italian national anthem because yeah. who could boo that national anthem? It's, yeah. it's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. That's what Gary Lineker <laughs> said as well, yeah. yeah. It's absolutely magnificent. So... Your three players to watch for England, Harris. Yeah, I think uh, Harry Kane is a straightforward choice for me because he's the main man for England, the captain, and, and uh, he gets the goals. He's a natural goal scorer. Uh, and uh, Jack Grealish, I chose him. You know, he hasn't really started games, but I think each time he has came on, uh, he's made a difference for for England. Of course, he came came off. Uh, came on and came off. Yeah. Came on and came off. Yeah, against Denmark, uh, but. That's the spirit of the English team. I think he didn't uh, whine about it, you know. He, they, they just need to get the job done and, and he was fine with that. And uh, for me, Raheem Sterling has uh, has to be in the team of the tournament. For, for I think if, for England, if England win, win yeah. he may end up getting the golden ball as, yes, as player of the tournament. Possibly. Right? possibly. Uh, I think he's made a huge, huge impact for, for England. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit understated before the, the Euros. Yeah. He didn't have a, a great season with Man City. Uh, I, I read some speculation on Real Madrid wanting to sign him mm -hmm. uh, recently. Uh, I read so some speculation that he may be given the Spurs and that seemed to coincide with the moment he decided to start playing better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He didn't seem to like being linked with Spurs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it's ironic because I think City wants to sign Kane and, and Grealish and that leaves Sterling a little bit, you know, uh, yeah. a big question mark. Yeah. But now Real Madrid is uh, and interested. And, so and Sancho's gone to Man United. Yeah. And, and so, where so do you go from lots here? Lots of right? movements, right? Yeah. yeah, lots of movements. But I think these three are important. Like, 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 there's no defenders in my players to watch because basically I think these attacking players will be making a, a yeah. huge difference for, mm. for the English team. Yeah. So we're going to put you on the spot here. What's going to be the score? Uh, I think it's going to be tough. It's going to go all the way down to the wire. Mm. I think it's going to be a penalty shootout. Penalty shootout. I think so, yeah. And Italy is going to take it. Yeah. I liked him up and right Thank up you. until... <laughs> right up until that bit. Yeah. Just but... While we've got you here, yes, we are going to have you do the draw. Yep. Ash, if you would like to do Absolutely. the honors. Absolutely. For the signed Tony Cruz jersey, I'm just going to shuffle a little bit of names here. Of course, he's just retired from international football. What a player he is, yeah, right, Harris? Yes. What a career yeah. he had, yeah. So we're going to give you the honors to pick out the winner of the signed jersey. You have to close your eyes, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> just in case your name is in there. <laughs> 
Yeah, just in case. Uh, okay, got it. All right. And the winner is. You want to say it out? Yeah. Yu Mei Ling. Yu Mei Ling. Yu Congratulations, Mei Ling. Yu Mei Ling. You won yourself a signed Tony Cruz jersey picked out from a Singapore captain himself, Haris Harun. Enjoy the jersey, right? Yeah, and thank you very much for being down here, Harris. For those of you at home, if you didn't win um, on that one, we have our match prediction. You can go right now. There's a separate feed on our Facebook page. Find that competition. Get your entry in before kickoff. Predict the last goal scorer before penalty shootouts, okay? And if you predict the last goal scorer, you can be in with a chance, the last chance to win a national jersey from either England or Italy. So get your comments in before kickoff. And we know you've been following our skills challenge for the SPL over the last seven weeks. Well, now we have our final contender and what a contender. It's Tomoyuki Doi, the SPL's top scorer from Hogan, trying to beat Amaruldin's 100 points to take the title. Off we go to OTH. Are you looking forward to? Oh, I, I'm really looking forward to penalty with my right leg. Okay, which is your Euro 2020 pick? France. Why? France is the strongest country in the world now. And which player stands out for you? For me, Mbappe is the fast, fastest player in the world, so yeah. My favorite challenge is penalty with my right leg because I had a mistake so I want to do it again. Great stuff from Tomoyuki Do. As you all can see, that was a wrap of the fantastic men's skills challenge at OTH. Let's have a look at the table now and of course, Amiruddin Ashraf has topped the table of 100 points and he is of course a winner of the men's skills challenge. Congratulations Amirul, but also thank you to all our fantastic participants and players. We have done quite well, I have to say, in the challenge, yeah, right? We had a fantastic group of players and, and really nice to see them get into it and challenging each other. And, and share it as well. And, and making fun of Lionel and Jasper when they scored. That was, that was <laughs> yeah, a highlight great for stuff. me. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, here in the studio, I'm very excited to welcome Singapore legend ID Iskanda in the house. How are you, ID? Fine, thank you, Ash. Uh, good to be here. Uh, Thanks to James who invited <laughs> me uh, personally. So uh, I'm happy to, to give my, my own prediction for, for the finals. Fantastic. What have you been up to, ID? Uh, nothing much. Uh, you know, ever since I left uh, football, uh, I'm into events now. I'm an event consultant. So I've been doing bits and pieces here and there. And I'm, I'm also uh, working very closely with uh, Jamia organization, uh, helping out the underprivileged kids. So that's uh, what wow, keeping me busy and beside the family. Stuff. And I know you're still playing because I run into <laughs> you every now and then out on the football pitch. Okay. We, go, we both go to a tournament every yeah. year <laughs> in wow. Phuket and I think we're two of the oldest guys there. So we just <laughs> know how we do that. Anyway, we talked earlier on with Harris a little bit about how Italy and England got to the final. Yeah. So now let's talk a little bit about what we're actually going to see in the final. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've got you here, coach, really to share some of that insight with us. Now we, we've looked at 
how the teams are set up, and we're we're fairly confident mm. about how Italy mm. are going to mm. set up the whole tournament. They've they've looked like this, and what's kind of stood out to you in this formation? What do you think is making this work? Well, I think uh, you have to give credit to Mancini. You know, I think Mancini, when he first took over in 2018, he changed the, the formation of uh, the Italian team because they used to play with a five uh, defense, five man defense, but uh, he has gone into a, a 4-3-3, a more attacking uh, kind of style of play. And I think you would agree with me. Um, when you watch Italy back then, uh, in the past, or you, wa uh, you watch Italy now, you can see that the Italians are uh, uh, in an exciting team to watch because they, they attack. You know, they play attacking and uh, exciting football as compared to previously. Uh, they played a very tactical game, slow pace, um, and it's kind of boring, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think uh, what uh, Mancini had done is actually Mancini had uh, made made this team to play as a unit, you know, a working unit. And you can see that uh, it, it, the, the backbone of the team is always these two, and uh, together with uh, Donnarumma. And he has uh, a, a good uh, three defense in front of the back four that is technically good. They are technically good, comfortable with the ball, and they have exciting uh, forwards uh, who, you know, who are fast. Uh, you know, they are dangerous in counter attacks, and that's the reason why they have done well. So, switching to England a little bit, and, and we've kind of done two options here. We saw England play this kind of 4-2-3-1 yeah. against perhaps some of the less strong uh, opponents, but my feeling is mm -hmm. they're probably going to switch back to the back three, yeah. um, which they used against Germany. And, and we'll talk in a second about the logic for that, but when you look at this England team, what, what is it that stands out for you with this, with this England team? Well, I think this, uh, <coughs> there's a good balance in this England team. Uh, there's, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, height, in terms of, uh, you know, players with pace and technical uh, players as well. And uh, what uh, I really, really like about this England team is that not only the first 11, they are good players, but they also have a good yeah. bunch of players on the bench. Mm -hmm that can actually come in and change the game. Yeah. So I think uh, Southgate has done really well uh, to form this team. And uh, th there's a reason why it doesn't surprise me that England has gone this far into the finals. But coming back to the formation, right? Um, that, that's one advantage that uh, Southgate has because he has formed this team and he can actually play not only one formation, but actually two formation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Yes, I, I agree with you. Against the lesser teams, uh, you know, England played with uh, uh, a kind of conservative with three uh, men defence at the back. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think against Germany, they had to do that because Germany was playing the same, yeah. you know. So it depends on how, I guess, Southgate wants to approach this game against mm -hmm. the Italians. Uh, reason being, how they want to start is whether they want to press high up. If they want to press high up, then I think uh, it will be difficult for, uh, for this formation. It will be easier if they get resort to 4-3-3, mm. yeah? because uh, man to man yep. uh, is a lot easier to press them. But if they're going to play that uh, weight and go for the counters, I think this formation uh, suits them, which is going to be difficult for Ital the Italians to actually play against this formation. So, the Italians didn't have it easy against Spain, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Spain were dominating midfield. Correct. In fact, I'm quite surprised they didn't make it to the finals. Mm -hmm. It's a pity, actually. Um, but you know, when you watch the game, you would see as well. I mean, James as well spoke earlier on about some of the weaknesses that were mm -hmm. exposed mm -hmm. um, in their defense. So, what do you make of that? You know, Italy's uh, weaknesses. So per we, se. we've kind of showed here how mm -hmm. England might mm -hmm. match up against mm -hmm. that yeah. defense. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, the Italians, uh, the, you know, they suffered. Uh, kind of a bit against uh, uh, the Spain because when they overload this area, uh, you, I mean, they overload the, the players, as in they have a false nine, Olmo, uh, yeah. Olmo yeah. Olmo actually drop, and it creates problem for uh, the two centre-back. It created problem for the two centre-back, whether they should go or they shouldn't, you know, and uh, it clearly shown uh, how Spain scored when Morata actually dropped here, and then, uh, you know, yeah, they played, played around like the here, one, two, yes, and straight, and in that straight away yeah. around that area. So, uh, I think Kane will be doing the same, mm. alright? I think Kane has the ability to actually drop. 
uh, and play that defense splitting passes. Mm -hmm. So it depends on now who Southgate picks the wingers, the two wingers, and also whether he plays with the uh, uh, three uh, men behind, where you can actually have Trippier and uh, Shaw yeah. to, to actually overload the, the, these sides, you know. Yeah. So it depends on how uh, Southgate plays. Uh, but I think for me, uh, if, you want, if, if England would like to press the Italians higher, then they have to play with a three. Yeah. Because it's a lot easier with these two men-to-men uh, he, I yeah. mean, he has to do, uh, yeah. I mean, um, Mason Mount has to mark Jorginho, yeah. uh, you know, to prevent him because he's one of the, uh, the key players that actually will collect the ball and actually spray the passes. Mm -hmm. Beside uh, Jorginho will be also Verratti, mm -hmm. you know, so they are very comfortable with the ball. So if England is daring enough to go for <laughs> the high pressing, then I think England should go for this formation. But of course, the downside of this yeah. formation is that these fullbacks... Agree may not be able to bomb on so much because compared to say the three at the back there's potentially if they bomb on there's gaps yeah. at the side here which Insignia definitely Chiesa mm -hmm. are, are mm -hmm. going to come into right mm -hmm. so that may lend itself to, 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 towards the three at the back Agreed. so that you're a little bit safer there so like you say it's yeah. a it's a gamble. Yeah, it's a gamble. Way. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's a gamble um, but this is a final not forgetting right so if the score remains 0-0, zero, zero, there's always extra time. Mm. So uh, it depends on how uh, both coaches are going to play uh, their, their cards. You know? And I think uh, it's going to be a very tactical uh, game, uh, tactical approach. So in, I, I, wouldn't f I, wouldn't see, I wouldn't foresee that you know, there will be goals in the first 15 minutes unless one of the coaches decided to go for the risk. Mm. You think it will be a bit cagey, <coughs> feel each other yes, out? Yes. Because Italians traditionally yeah. are like that. Correct. The English may be a little bit nervous. Yeah. They're not used to being at mm -hmm. this stage, quite mm -hmm. a young team, mm -hmm. you know, but they've got the home crowd behind them, yeah. right? So it will be interesting to see how that changes. But even as you said, England can change yeah. during the game. We saw that against Denmark. When, mm -hmm. Once they went 2 1 up, yeah. they took off Grealish, brought on Trippier, and switched to three switched, at the back yeah. to, to see out the game. So yeah. they do have that capability. And it was interesting to hear you talk as well in this formation around who these players might be. Mm -hmm. out here that mm -hmm. if, if it's potentially if they've got three up here then it lends itself to a mount yes. or a Foden being in yeah. here but if they really only have the two and one is definitely Sterling mm -hmm. the other is probably Saka or maybe Sancho yes uh, because you need a bit more mm -hmm. industry up there Agree. Right? So, so who has stood out to you from these two teams so far who do you think are going to be the players that decide this game okay for me personally for the Italian side uh, I mean Donnarumma has always been outstanding. Uh, he's an outstanding goalkeeper and I check his record. Uh, no opponents have ever scored more than one goal against him. Really? So, yeah? Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Uh, and he's going to be a, a big figure if the game is going into penalties because, yeah. you know, he's, he's huge, he's okay. massive. Um, he scares all those <laughs> penalty takers, you know. Um, yeah, uh, besides him, I would say the two centre-backs, although they are old, they are in the thirties, mm -hmm. but I think what mixed up to, uh, you know, what they have done well in this tournament is actually their positioning and reading of the game. So I think they, they are crucial. Uh, and as you, as we all know, the Italians uh, defending in terms of defending, they are one of the best, uh, you know, team in the world. Uh, beside uh, these two centre backs, I will go for you know Giorgino and uh, Verratti. Okay, they are very influential in midfield and also Varela, uh, Barella in, in, in some parts of the game. But Insane and Immobile, uh, well, they are uh, two good players uh, attackingly. For England, I think two key players is this. I think that's the reason why Southgate has always been. Uh, he received a lot of flags. Mm. Uh, His in, double pivots. Double pivots, yeah. Eh? Yeah. But I think they have done well. Mm. I think they have done well protecting the back four, the back three, uh, and of course, Keane's. Kane is slowly showing that, you know, uh, I mean, he has done well, but in, in the first couple of games, he didn't uh, play that well. But I think now he's, sh he's uh, you know, showing why he, he's the captain and also why he's the England uh, top scorer. Um, yeah, I think England, if uh, Southgate wants to change the game, 
You can always look at Rashford, you can always look at Sancho, yeah. Grealish, you know, so big amount of uh, players to choose from. I'm, I'm a bit worried that I asked you who's going to decide the game and you picked eight Italian players <laughs> and, only, <laughs> and only three English players. So what, what's your prediction then, Heidi? Which way are we going? Um, okay, it's, this is going to be a very tough one. I, I think no, nobody uh, can predict that, you know, it's a straightforward answer whether the Italians or the English uh, uh, team are going to win. Uh, but looking at, you know, how these two teams had, uh, uh, had you know, gone, had progressed from, from the qualifying matches and also up uh, to, to, to the finals, uh, both teams have done well. And uh, <clears throat> I think on, based on home advantage, I'll, I'll go for England, yeah, because uh, I think they have not won any tournament for the last 65 years, if I'm not mistaken, right? That was in 1955 years, yes, yeah. since 1966. So yeah. this could be one of their motivational, uh, <laughs> I, you know, factor that I want to win this for the country, and I think mm -hmm. they will win. Oh, I like that. Most of our pundits are going right the other way, so I'm glad to finally have <laughs> someone on my side. Thank you for joining us, Heidi. No really problem. appreciate you sharing your insights yeah. with us, and enjoy the big game. Thank you. And now it's the moment we've been waiting for. Of course, we are giving away another signed jersey as part of the Euro 2020 finale show. And this week we have Thomas Muller. And of course, in the house again, we have ID, who's going to be doing the draw. There were hundreds, or should I say thousands of you guys who participated. And you know, we just want to thank you for all your support. And yeah, the moment has arrived, guys. Yep, so, so who, lots of names yeah, in here. I can see Edmund, I can see Ridwan, <laughs> I can see Ryan. I can see Jason, but there's only one winner. So right. who is going to win the signed Bayern Munich Thomas Muller jersey? There we have it, all authentic and ready mm -hmm. in the studio. It is on Instagram, Yentzi, Y-E-N-T-Z-I-E, Yentzi on Congratulations, Yentzi. Congratulations. So you've heard from our experts right here on the show, but let's now hear the predictions from some of our pundits. Hi to everyone out there in Singapore. It's Paul Parker here. After England getting through, and now we have an Italy v England um, final in the Euros. I'm just looking at it now, and as much as you know, I want England to win, I'm really going, and I've always been very passionate about the Italians so far in this tournament. Their energy levels have been really good. The fact that they're defenders with those two old campaigners in the middle for them. I think that they, the Italians will win 2-1. England's biggest strength is getting the ball to the front line and finding Sterling and maybe Harry Kane in the right place at the right time. But it's going to win 2-1. I really want to back Italy on this one, purely because I've been a fan of Italian football for a very, very long time. And not to mention, as a former defender myself, Chiellini and Bonucci are the masters at defending. So, and I really like the Mancini's methods, the way he's brought this team together. There's no one star player, so to speak, and they are such a team. And from the moment they sing the national anthem and to the way they play football on the pitch, it's just amazing. I've been blown away by this Italian mentality and the willingness to win for one another. So on that premise alone, I'm gonna go with Italy to win this one. I know I'm not going to be very popular with a lot of England fans, but so be it. I predict that England will win this championship. Uh, England is getting stronger uh, game by game. And it's been a while for England to win this cup. And I'm pretty sure that Eric Kemp will win this, will score the winning goal for this game. And I predict it will be 1-0. As much as I know that Italy defense is very solid, but I'm pretty sure that England is more hungry to win this championship. My prediction for the Euro 2021 is to Italy to win uh, against England and final score will be 2-1 in full time. Hi there, I'm Lionel Lewis. My prediction for the Euro finals will be Italy 2, England 1. The reason for this is because the Italian defence are a tough nut to crack and for the English playing at home, there's definitely added pressure. So there you have it, my final prediction will be Italy 2, England 1. Great to see Italy and England, two of the best teams in the final, fully deserved. I'm going to stick with Italy, they were my outsiders from the start. I just feel Italy will win 1-0, 1-0.
in a very, very tight game. Defensively, they're strong. Uh, going forward, they got a lot of options, a lot of goals coming from different players. And I'm just going to stick with that prediction. I just feel the Italians might just uh, surprise a big, big upset on the night and beat England. Forza Italia. Hi, Singapore fans. Hope you're enjoying the tournament. One game to go. For me, it's got to be England. It's going to be a tight game. Italy, so good defensively. So are England. But so many good players on view going forward. Still think it'll be tight, though. England to win 1-0. Harry Kane to score the winner. Job done. Bit of magic from Harry to do, to do the business. Enjoy the match, everyone. Cheers. And there we have it, all our pundits with their predictions for the Euro 2020 final. Some very interesting guesses there. I know James isn't very happy about that one. But I know we'll have to see because football is round and the ball is round and, and you know, things just very unpredictable. Anyway, you know what has been unpredictable? Also, the quiz challenge. I know I haven't done well, but James has maintained his winning streak. So, team host. Okay, he's, he took it for Team the host. Time. Yeah. Team okay. host, <laughs> I have to say. Well, today, of course, we have a very... One, one final guest for our show and his name is Conway joining us in the audience quiz. Thank you so much Conway for participating in our final quiz. I can tell that you are supporting the Three Lions. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> uh, I support uh, Three Lions because of uh, Man United the year. Wow. Uh, wow. Okay. Luke Shaw fan, yeah? Luke Shaw, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, awesome. fair enough. So we'll see how they do well, guys. Today, the quiz topic is about Euro 2020 so far. So everything that's happened in the tournament, which I'm pretty sure, you know, you guys should, should know anyway. If you've been watching the tournament, guys. So I'm going to let you choose which set you want to go with. Is it set A or set B? Uh, I choose set B. Set B, which means, James, you go first. Set A. All right. Question number one for set A. Who has been the youngest player to appear for their country in the UEFA Jude Euro 2020 group stage? Who are England? It's a multiple choice. Okay, I'm going to give you an option. Okay. Is it A, Jude <laughs> Bellingham, England? Is it B, Pedri, Spain? Or is it C, Kekper Kolowski from Poland? I'm still going with Jude Bellingham. Are you sure? No. <laughs> the answer is actually C. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It Not is a good C, start. Casper Kolops. We actually, Jude, um, he was young for a while. Yeah, he the was youngest, the youngest for a while. Yeah. But he was overtaken by Casper from Poland. Casper. Casper. But anyway. I don't like people called Casper this week, but I'll like Casper okay. the friendly ghost. <laughs> anyway, well, it's. It's all it's on you, still, Conway. Here you go. It's all on you, Conway. Your all right. Okay, how many red cuts have been awarded before the start of the semi finals for the UEFA Euro 2020? Is it A4? B6 or is it C8? How many red cards have been awarded? I choose A. Oh, that no, is not the correct six, answer. Right? It B. is 6. Yeah. That's right. Two from Wales. Go Wales. Unbelievable. <laughs> Wales. One from Switzerland, Poland, as well as Netherlands. All right. Question number two. Back to you, James. Before the start of the semi finals for the UEFA Euro 2020, name the two. Join top scorers that are in the running for the Golden Boot. Uh, it, at that was time, with five goals, it was uh, Ronaldo and Patrick Schick. That is correct. It yeah. is Ronaldo and Patrick Schick, and you didn't even need a multiple choice for that. Great stuff. 1-0 to James. Question number two for you, Conway. Which team is the lowest ranking of the third place teams to qualify to the knockout phase? Is it A, Czech Republic, B, Switzerland, or is it C, Ukraine? Which team is the lowest ranking of the third place teams to qualify for the knockout place? You want me to repeat that? Is it A, Czech Republic, B, Switzerland, or is it C, Ukraine? I, I chose A. No, oh, C, Ukraine. That is not the correct answer. Uh. The answer is C. Again, it's multiple choice, so you yeah, cannot... Uh, you can. <laughs> so, right now, it's, uh, it's still 1-0, one one yeah? Okay, let's go to question number three. Back to you, James. Which two teams were first-time qualifiers for the UEFA Euro 2020 finals? Was it A, Finland and North Macedonia, your favourite country? Is it B, North Macedonia and Slovakia? Or was it C, Finland and Austria? 
A, Finland and my, my new adopted home of North Macedonia. Oh, North Macedonia, <laughs> it is correct. It is Finland and North Macedonia. All right, it's back to you, Conway. This one is an interesting one. I hope that you know the answer to this, okay? Which Italian player has yet to play a single game in the UEFA <laughs> Euro 2020? Is it A, Alex Meret, B, Gateno Castrovilli? Can't pronounce the second name, but C, and we have C as well, Raspadori. Ooh. Is it A, Alex Meret, B, Castrovilli, or is it C, Raspadori? They have not played a single game in the UEFA Euros at all for Italy. Uh, I choose A. The answer is A, according to this. Wow, so good guess, eh? Good guess. It is okay. A, yeah. Okay, so... It's now 2-1 to James. Okay, let's go to the fourth question. Still very much, you know, possible for Conway to, you know... Not, not happy with this. Okay, uh, alright, here we go. It's okay, it's okay. We'll go. This is the last one anyway. Question number four. For you, Conway, who scored... Oh, for you, sorry. Sorry, see? He's trying to give every advantage you can here. <laughs> <laughs> Team host. Team host. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry. James, who scored the fastest goal in the UEFA Euro 2020? It's an open... Oh, goal. now I get open questions. What the... Um, I'm sure you know this. Goal. Fastest goal. In the fastest UEFA goal. Euro 2020. Oh, I'm having a bit of trouble with this one. I'm sure you know uh, this. I'm going Harry Kane against Ukraine. Unfortunately, it was oh. not. Yeah. You want to you wanna, you wanna steal this? Yeah. You know who yeah. it is? What's that? That is correct. It's Emil Forsberg. He's got for yeah. Sweden uh, a 1-0 lead against Poland only after 81 seconds. So it's 2-2 uh. now. Wow. I mean, that was tricky as well. Okay. Speaking of goals, right? The, it's back to you, Conway. Name the player with the highest top speed in the UEFA Euro 2020 tournament. Sorry? The highest speed. The player with the highest, the fastest player in the UEFA Euro 2020. <laughs> I read I read this yesterday. <laughs> I literally read this yesterday in a in an article. Oh, uh, you have to. Do you know? Do you have a? Do you have a the answer? Uh, I guess the Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale. Oh, I wish it was Gareth Bale. Who is it, James? No, I can't remember for the life of me. I'm gonna say it's Pedri's. Uh, no, so I'm say Sarabia, but I I can't. Close. Good guesses, by the way. It was actually the one who. You know, leaped off with an injury for Italy. Spinat Zola is the fastest player in the UEFA Euro. His speed is 33.8 kilometers an hour, a little bit faster than Raheem Sterling as yeah. well as Kylian Mbappe. Okay, let's go now to the final question. It's back to you, uh, James. All right. The highest scoring game at 3 5 was be between. Croatia and Spain who benefited from extra time, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Name the two extra time goal scorers. Can I get both of them for one point? What <laughs> questions am I getting? Go big or go home is the last question. Uh, <laughs> well, one was, uh, I'm going to say, Omo. And the other one was... Um, Oyazaba. You got Oyazabal right, but the other one is not right. I'll give you a chance. Come on. Final one. Morata. That is correct. It is Morata at 100 minutes. I wanted to say Morata. I was going round and okay, round. Okay, so because of the last question. How am I getting questions where I have to get two answers to get one? What is, what is going Salute, on? Mark. You picked the right envelope this week, I okay, tell you. Okay, <laughs> last question to take it home, maybe. Conway, name the game with the biggest winning margin in the, Euro the Euros so far. The biggest winning margin. 5 0. Oh, who, 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 who's, who, what game was that? Uh, Spain versus uh, Slovakia. Perfect. It was indeed Spain and Slovakia. And we end today's quiz in a, in a draw. So we tie actually. Tiebreaker. You got a tiebreaker. So we got a tiebreaker. Yeah? And I actually like this question. I actually really love it. Oh, God. It's about it's eight. First time we've had a tiebreaker. <laughs> it's the first time in the history of the show. Aye, aye, aye. Well, you know, you are, you, you, are, you are creating history here in economy. Okay, so the tiebreaker question is, who <laughs> is the oldest player in Euro 2020 and what is his age? Senko Leng... Senko Leng... Senko Leng... 38. 
Sorry, what was the, the what was the guess? Stecklenburg. Stecklenburg, uh, 38, yeah? The Netherlands goalkeeper. Uh, I thought there was someone else that was older. Was it from your favorite? Was it from your favorite country? I was thinking it was Goran Pandev and thirty <laughs> yeah, yeah. and thirty-eight also. Yeah, I thought it was Goran Pandev, thirty-eight. So is that your answer? Yeah. So Goran Pandev is actually thirty-seven years old. The correct yeah. answer it's is Stecklenburg. Stecklenburg, he is indeed 38 years old, but what a game, guys! Oh, what a game! Good job, Frankie. Conway. Good job, Conway. Congrats, Conway. You've actually won this week. <laughs> Congratulations, you've beaten James for the first time. Am I fired now? Yeah, I you, are you going to fire me? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm well going to fire the question writers. I tell you that one. Great what stuff. questions you know, are you guys you know, writing? These questions are, are not easy, so I can tell you're a massive football fan, you know your stuff as well. So you know what, you win yourself a jersey yeah. as well. So tell us what jersey. <laughs> yeah, which, which uh, yeah. you get a Premier League jersey yeah. for the next season. I'm assuming you're going to ask for that one, yeah? Okay. Not a City one, obviously. Oh God, we've got another Man United jersey on the streets of Singapore. I don't know what to tell you. But thank you for playing, Conway. Thank yeah. you, really appreciate that. We are now going to hear from more of you, the audience members. We're going to go down to OTH. Yesterday afternoon, we were down there hearing who you think is going to win the European 2020 final. Over to OTH. And we're down here at OTH to do a little bit of a skills challenge and games as well as find out what people thought about the England and Italy final. Let's get their thoughts and also see how they fared in the game. What do you think is going to win? <laughs> okay, I think he says England. Okay. <laughs> Even though we are wearing France, but yeah. Yes, yes. I think the fact is the I think Italy, yeah. they, I think they play well yeah, in this Euro. So they will win. Who is going to score? I think Immobile and Isigne. Yeah. Uh, I would have to say Italy. Uh, they just got too much, too much quality for me. Uh, I thought England were, were good in their last game, but yeah, I'll, I'll back the Italians. England. And how many score line? Who's going to score? Three, two. Right, so now I want you to take part in the uh, contest. If you said England, you have to kick left, and uh, Italy's on the right. So you obviously win some merchandise. So all the best. Try your best to score on the left, okay? Oh, yes. Hi, Ebene. Who do you think is going to win the Euro final? I think England is going to win the Euro final. Fantastic. What about you? I think England also is going to win. Tell me which team you're supporting for the Euros. Uh, actually, I'm support England. So, what is the score going to be? 1-0 uh, on 2-0. Yeah. Oh, not bad. Congratulations. England. Uh. Uh, England. Oh, congrats. Okay. Italy. That's the correct answer, okay? Because you say Italy, you have to score on the right, okay? Because England is on the left. <laughs> Italy. Yes, so that's the correct answer again. So now you have to score. Come to the end of the challenge here. I mean, you all can see as well that England were absolutely dominating and nobody really picked Italy. But you know what? I have faith in my Italianos. So let's go and see how, you know, they fare as well in the Euro Finals. And we had great fun down at OTH. Thanks to everybody who took part in our games. I'm really excited to find out who wins X3 tonight. Now, of course, we are giving away signed Donnarumma gloves, the one and only Italian goalkeeper. So stay tuned till the end of the show to find out who wins. Now, of course, in studio with us today, we have tennis superstar from the Singapore <laughs> team. We have Shahid Alam in the house. Thank you so much, Shahid, for joining us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks awesome. A lot. So tell us, what, what have you been up to? 
Um, so right now I'm in national service, um, but I'm still juggling w with my tennis, uh, training still um, as per usual, as much as I can. And also just trying to like, you know, enjoy the NS experience a little bit because I've been deferring mm. it for like quite some time uh, for <laughs> tennis and for... for the like, right of Singapore, you know. Yeah, so... <laughs> so are, you the, mean, are you the oldest guy there? Um, I'm one of the oldest, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Sea Games, yeah. You, I guess you were excited bit bummed, to play, yeah. but now seems to be postponed. Yeah. Huh? So I mean, we're all a bit bummed because we're all training hard, um, trying to, you know, make make it for the Sea Games team and stuff like that. But I mean, it's for the safety of everyone. Um, I, I think it's the right decision in the end because if they're not confident of like containing the virus in Vietnam, um, you know, it, it might get a bit like messy. You know, once we all reach there from so many people from different countries and stuff like that. So yeah, hopefully next year, May, April, I think that's what they're planning. Um, okay. Hopefully things get better and then we go again. <laughs> so, so for those of you who are tennis fans, obviously you'll, you'll maybe have seen Shahid play in some of the international tournaments that we have here as well. But I, I have to ask, who's the favorite player that you've played against or the person you're most um, excited that you got to play against? Okay, so there was one time that I played an exhibition match uh, where I partnered Maria Sharapova. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, so that was actually pretty, pretty cool. Uh, we played at a floating platform um, at like uh, Clifford Bay, I uh, no, um, Fullerton Bay Hotel. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like on water. It's, it's, it's such a sick experience, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it really. Me like, too. Yeah, so we, um, I partnered Maria Sharapova and I played against uh, another Singaporean player and Michael Cheng. So wow. yeah, that, that, was, that was an experience, okay. yeah. Cool, but you're also a big football fan, yeah? Who's your team? Yeah, um, my team is France uh, mm. for the Euros and Manchester United for... Too many Man United fans. Yeah. <laughs> I keep mentioning Pogba just now, Gio. Yeah. <laughs> so let's take a look at your fantasy team. Um, yeah. I think there's... Isn't there only, like, Shaw left in the tournament for you right yeah. now, still actually playing? So you, you did manage to get Maguire. Luke Shaw in. Maguire. Maguire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why didn't you pick Maguire? I don't know, man. I don't think... It Actually, he, <laughs> might, he, might, he might do a hitter or something. Yeah, right? could last set minute, pieces yeah. there. You've got him, him or Stones, you know, one of them is, yeah. one of them yeah. is due a goal. I think, you know, now we've reached a final, and if everyone's done their transfers well and used their budgets well, your team pretty much should be comprising, mm. you know, yeah. <laughs> seven from one team and, and, yep. and eight from another team. So I think we'll see a lot of similarities in the team. But I'm interested, Jade, you, you've, you've captained Insigne. Yeah. What, what's your, what's your um, feeling there? No, it's just uh, he plays like in a like left wing kind of mm. position, like in the front three sometimes, and then he's a midfielder, so like you get more points if like um, mm. like he plays like not really in midfield, like yep. he's like attacking like um, forward, and so like he has I don't know he has probably higher chances yeah, to score. Italy, the goals tend to come from the midfield. From the midfield, right? midfield yeah. only yeah. got two. The rest of yeah. all pretty much yeah. come. Yeah. You know, Locatelli's got two, and has yeah. got two. Chiesa he always starts game. though. He always starts to match. Yeah, his, I think, uh, and I think that's a big thing this week, right? Yeah. Is you want to make sure that all eleven players you have on the pitch that's are going to at least start the yeah. game mm. to to have a chance, and then and then also look at how you organise your bench, uh, because yeah. for those of you who, who don't know the order of your outfield players on your bench, one, two, three. So Chiesa, Stones, Belotti. If one of your starting eleven doesn't play they will pull up a sub from the order that they are there. So right. if, for example, Mason Mount doesn't play at all at all in the game, then the, the, the machine will pull Chiesa off your bench as the first player. Yep. Regardless, as long as it fits your formation, that's what they'll do, right? So important to have your bench organized right, right as well, yeah? But you're, you're leaning towards Italy, right? Yeah, for the, for the fantasy um, team, honestly, but then I want England to win. Yeah, Ooh. we we all we're start, we're starting no? to get a little a few more England <laughs> supporters yeah, on yeah, now. Yeah, we, we, yeah, the pundits yeah, have all gone sure. for Italy, but the, the the real people yeah are going for England here. Yeah. I, I mean, we we all watch uh, English football, so yeah. we all know the players. We, Some yeah. people say we watch it too much. <laughs> 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 so yeah, hopefully it goes over. <laughs> okay. And from the England team, who do you think is going to be the the player that makes the difference? Honestly, I think Harry Kane, he has a bit of a like, quiet kind of Euros. Uh, started off really slow. And then I think he's got a couple of goals, right? Yeah, Somewhere. he's up to yeah. four now. Yeah, yeah. yeah four. Out of nowhere, actually. Yeah, so I, I think he's going to step up big time for England. Yeah. I, d I think it's too late to win the Golden Boot. I, I, I was asked about this 
earlier and he would need to score two to win the golden boot not one mm. right um, but you never know right so you never know and yeah. anything can happen but uh, two goals in the final against an italian team and we had id iskander on here earlier and he mentioned that donnarumma has never conceded more than one goal in a game for italy oh right which is not a good omen <laughs> and we shall because he has gloves like this right? <laughs> <laughs> so let's take exactly. a look at, at, at ash's team yeah, so I hope the, so the thing that stood out to me here um ash I don't know what you're spending your money on. <laughs> Which time you've got no money so, left? So, what are you yeah, okay, so, so like I used all my wild cards and what was the other one? There was another the Limitless, yeah, limitless, limitless yeah. as well. So okay. I used it all. I swear I didn't put Kelvin, Kelvin you Lewin there actually. I remember putting Phillips or something, but I even tried to change subbed, my yeah? formation. Okay, yeah, yeah, so I don't know what happened. It was like, yeah, Tyron I don't actually Mings? remember. Yeah, he's God yeah? knows why, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, whatever, whatever it is, I'm quite happy with my front line yeah, besides yeah. Calvert, Calvert, and you've got a win. fully Italian midfield. Yeah, I I don't know. I just like the Italian midfield, even though I think they were uh, dominated by Spain as well in the last game. So interestingly, um, but yeah, I mean, just like just like uh, Shahid, I like Insigne as well. I think mm. he's been phenomenal. I mean, he's very petite, right, in size, but he's you know standing out there for all all of us shorties, lah. So I'm quite <laughs> proud. <laughs> <laughs> Ash and her short you yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, and, yeah. You, and you've captured Jorginho, which I can only assume means you think Italy are going to get a penalty uh, in probably, this game. Probably, yeah. yeah. He's ice cool and I think he's got, I think he's a little bit older, right, with the experience that he has. So I think you need that, that cool head to, to captain. Obviously, Chiellini as well would have been a great captain with the experience he brings. Mm. But I think anybody in the Italian squad, um, you know, has the ability to lead. Uh, so if you mm. ask me, England as well, I think I would have put Kane as my captain, but I think just like him, I think uh, someone in midfield would be would be better, mm. yeah. Because you never know, the game might just change, right? It's been so unpredictable the mm. entire Euros. I think if anybody's going to get a penalty at Wembley is England, uh, no chance that he's getting it. And the laser. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, so this was my team. So I've gone with two up front, and my logic is that both of these teams only play one up front. So I've tried to make sure that everyone in my starting eleven will start the game. And the little gamble I've got there is Saka, is the one that maybe won't. Um, so I've got a Serbi on the bench there, just in, in case. But So I, I say I, I was really trying to find a third forward. But the reality is neither of these teams, you know, Belotti has hardly played, Rashford hasn't played that much, Calvert-Lewin yeah. wasn't even on the bench in the last game. So I just decided in the end to go with two and stack my midfield, again, for exactly yeah. the reasons you talk about, if, if, if the midfielder scores extra points. And for the same reason, I've kept in Sterling because yep. he's getting assists, he's getting goals. Um, so again, it's worth more if he scores than Kane scores, right? So we've reaching the end of our fantasy league, and you know we've had eighteen hundred of you playing. And as we go into the final, Hernandez Shafiq there with his kick FC has hung on to the lead. He's slightly extended his lead. In fact, he did slightly mm. better. And the scores are much lower in these rounds, right? Because yeah. there's only two matches. We've gone from 100-point rounds to 80-point rounds to yeah. 60 and now 40. And realistically, for this round, there's only going to be scoring 20 or so points. So I think our winners, our top three, I think, honestly, if you're not in that left-hand column right now, if you're not in that top six, I don't think you're going to be finishing in the top three because you'll need, you know, 35-plus yeah. points is, is going to be very difficult unless yeah. this turns into a, a goal fest you know, for Dominic oh, yeah, Calvert-Lewin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Shade. His, you know, our best scorer last week, Sombe007, has come in with 46 points and crept up the table a bit there. Uh, but guys, if you are one of those people on that top left column, uh, keep an eye on our Facebook and our Instagram because once we finish the league, we'll be reaching out to you. Uh, there are, remember, there are cash prizes and jersey prizes as well for the winners of our Fantasy League. So thank you, everyone, for taking part. We'll be in touch with the winners uh, find out soon. But Shahid, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. And thank good you. luck for England. Yeah. Right? And good luck for the Sea Games whenever <laughs> it eventually happens. Thank you so much. And for national service. Yeah. We thanks, salute thanks you. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks <laughs> for having me. Thanks, mate. Uh, before you go, we are going to yeah. do one last thing. We are going to have you draw yeah, the winner for the, the Donnarumma oh, gloves. Right, okay. Donnarumma gloves. This is where Shahid is. He was writing his name on a bunch of pieces of paper <laughs> before the show. And, and so? Oh man. so I see, what names do I see here? I see Roddy, I see Jason Chi, I see Karim Jot Singh, I see Dai Wang Chan, wow. Sharudi, I see lots of names here. Man. We're going to give him another little jumbo. You've got to close your eyes here. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want you picking favorites. In case favorites. some of your friends are in the bowl. Let's go. And the winner of the, the Donnarumma Gloves. 
the sign down on Roman. This is an Instagram. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's an Instagram handle. BC. I know that guy. Diary BC Dear Diary. Diary. That's Boon Chen from the Spurs Supporters Club. Wow. wow. Spurs finally won something. And you take a cheap shot on the show as well. That was the last time Shahid Alam will ever be on uh, <laughs> this show. So congratulations to Boon Chen. And now we are going back to OTH for our last lady in the skills challenge. And it is the legend, Charmaine Lim. Can she catch up with Rowder and Ernie at the top of the table? Let's go down to OTH. Charmaine, which challenge are you most looking forward to out here? Uh, 1v1s today. The 1v1 with Mira, yeah? Yes. It's a difficult one, okay. The <laughs> European Championships, who's going to win? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Germany. Germany? And who's the player to watch for you? Mario Götze. Mario Götze. Okay, good luck out there, Sham. Go get him. Thank you. Sham, how do you think that went? Uh, could have been better, I think. What went well, what not so well? Uh, I think I expected to hit the crossbar with uh, the penalty spot one, but then uh, it's a close shave. And a nice free kick there though, it's, it's okay. It's Thank right. you. So you scored 55 points, which puts you third overall. How do you feel about that? Uh, given that I, uh, I'm been retired You're for retired. a while. You're happily retired, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. happily retired. So I'm pretty happy with the score. So is not this going to make you get out of retirement now? Absolutely after not, man. You're done. I'm okay, done. well thank you Charmaine, Very Singapore happy. legend. Thank you for joining us. Well done. Thank you everybody. Thanks. And great stuff as well to our women finalists of the OTH Skills Challenge. Of course, Ernie as well as Rauda are joint champions at 60 points. But fantastic stuff from all the ladies who took part. I'm super proud of you, especially as a woman in football. You all can see that they're super happy as well to receive their prize. But of course, if you guys want to show your skills, don't forget that you all can take part in the Keep It Up Challenge right here on keepitup.sg. Show your skills and you guys can stand a chance to win a trip to watch a Premier League game. Here's your chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip to take in an EPL game in 2022. So here we go with a bit of fun with KeepItUp.SG. It's Thomas representing England on the left, Aidan representing Italy on the right. You've got 10 seconds, boys, starting now. Now we know which team's winning at the Euros tonight. Let's make you a winner with keepitup.sg. Four great prizes up for grabs. All you need to do is record a 10 second video of yourself keeping a ball, any ball in the air. Then upload that video to www.keepitup.sg or on the official Keep It Up app. Those videos will then be judged by Singaporean and international football legends and we'll notify the final 500 to make it through to our grand final. Remember to keep it up.sg. So once again, if you want to win, go to keepitup.sg. All you've got to do is send in a video of yourself keeping the ball up in the air for 10 seconds and you could win some fantastic prizes, including trips to see a Premier League game wow. in 2022. But we have another star with us right now, another great footballer. We have Pris, Priscilla Tan, who is down in Australia right now. 
uh, fulfilling her dream of playing football, right, Pris? Yes, that's right. Hey, so thank you for joining us, Pris. Pris is a, a Singapore national team player, and she's been watching the Euros, so we asked her to help us by naming her team of the tournament so far. So, so Pris, talk us through your team here. Some interesting, interesting choices. Interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess starting from the back, um, I, I chose Pickford in goals um, just because he's been keeping clean sheets. Oh, he's mm -hmm. yep. already secured the golden glove of the tournament, if I'm not wrong, right? Yep. yep. Um, he had a bit of a nervy show against Denmark, but <laughs> hopefully he'll be able to keep uh, another clean sheet against a pretty strong Italian side. Yep. Um, at the back, I think I've gone more with... Um, the experienced Bonucci at the back. He's yep. been a big rock as well as Maguire. Yep. As a Manchester United fan, I think um, he deserves to be in <laughs> controversial. Your, your entire back four, all Italy and England, yeah? And your goalkeeper. So clearly the defense of those two teams has stood out for you, yeah? Yeah, I mean, the Italians are known for their defending. Um, although they are playing a bit of a more a bit different from the traditional yeah. Italian football in this tournament, but I, I still think that their defense is quite strong. Yeah. Um in midfield I think Pedri really stands out for me at young age. But he's against um the Italians he actually played pretty well. He created a few ch few Absolutely. big chances but it's just uh, the, the Spanish didn't manage to score. <laughs> which is a bit of a shame, um, but I think he's done really well at such a young age. Uh, Paul Pogba, I think he's been influential, he's got a stunning goal, um, and I think in any side he can make a difference. That's spoken uh, like a true Paul... Manchester United fan, <laughs> I have to say Because <laughs> a lot of people were pointing to the fact he then gave away the goal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah probably well. knocked him out the tournament, but okay. But I like that you got Hoy Beer in here, you have Hoy Beer. Mm. And you're yeah, holding yeah. your midfield together. I like that as well. Yeah, you've got to have the balance line. in the midfield. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting forward line. A bit of Latino flair in there, yeah? Italy, France and Portugal together. I support together, you, girl. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. well, it's down the left. In, I think the, the teamwork between Insigne and Spinazzola has been doing really well. I mean, a bit unfortunate that he caught up with an injury. But if not, I think... He would be, I think he would be a big loss to the Italian side coming into the finals, even though Emerson did pretty well um, last game standing in for him. But Insigne has been doing really well. I think no defense has so far managed to, I guess, um, solve the problem of him cutting in on his right, um, from the left, cutting in from his right. He's got a few beautiful yeah. goals. So. And then you've gone for the big names, right? Benzema with, with four goals, Ronaldo with five goals, yeah? Yeah, well, Benzema's made a difference coming back into the French side. Obviously, he's been out of the national team for quite a while. But I think he has had a positive influence since coming on. And it's a bit yeah, hard yeah. trying to put him... Uh, I, I put Sterling on the bench as well. I think he's been doing yeah. really well. He's been one of the outstanding performers. I think mm -hmm. he's done even better than Kane. I, I would I would go with that. Let's let's take a look at Ash's team. Ash's got a few changes. Jan Sommer in goal instead of Pickford, and and I went the same. I, I was thinking about Pickford, but yeah. I, I saw a stat going into the semi final that although he had, you know, the four the the, the four clean sheets, was it four clean sheets or five yeah. clean sheets, uh, five clean sheets by that point, he'd only actually made I think eight saves. Exactly, but the game against and Spain really took it home for yeah, me. Yeah, and and for, yeah, Sommer I think he had twenty three yeah. saves or something and, and did saves well. In 10 minutes so I I, I support yeah. you on on Sommer. I think there's a lot of similarities in terms of Spinazzola, yeah. uh, Bonucci, Luke Shaw. A lot of similarities between our teams. Simon Kier, um, yeah, obviously. what a play as well. This, okay, maybe the last game he conceded as yeah. well. It caused that own goal. But throughout the tournament, I he really. I think there was a comment that he was the human of the tournament. Yeah, he may not like, have been the player of the tournament. Yeah. But I need you need you him in, in your team of the tournament. Denmark yeah. was everyone's second team, so. Yeah, and then Ash has also got Pedri, but this is where the Italians start coming in even more. Jorginho, <laughs> Verratti, managed to find space for Sterling, and managed I to did. get. I did. You uh, know, I was a little bit. 
it. 50-50 about it. I didn't like him in... Uh, I don't know that whole performance, okay, but I look at the overall... Uh, Sterling's overall performance, I think, for the whole tournament, he deserves to be in the team of the tournament. So, now, yeah. you only got Dumfries on the bench. See, this is my team now. I, I had Dumfries on the on the pitch with yeah. Luke Shaw, Kaya, and G Cialini at the back. I, yeah. You went for Bonucci. I, I had to go for Cialini. And then I, I put in Steven Zuba from Switzerland, and I'm not sure if people realize this, but he had four assists for mm. Switzerland. Easily the most assists of any player um, in the tournament. So for me, just you know, a bit of a, a, bit of a wild card in there. And, and I, I actually, when I was drafting my team up, was before the England yeah, game. semi-final, and I had Dolberg slash Kane. And I said, whoever scores in this game will be well, the one that gets on the bench. So Kane got in ahead of, uh, ahead of Dolberg on the bench. But I had Forsberg on the bench yeah, as well, I see obviously. That as He's, well, yeah. He scored uh, four goals. And, and uh, Sarabia as well. From Sarabia Spain. stood yeah. out for Interesting me as well. Choice. So, but I, I think all of our teams have kind of those seven, eight players in yeah. common the Italian defenders, the Ronaldo, Pedri, yeah. Hoybeer, those kind of players are coming exactly, through in a lot yeah. of the, the teams putting, pulling out there. But Pris, I mean, while we got you here, um, we've got to talk to you a little bit about Singapore football as well, obviously. Um, and I mentioned at the beginning, you're, you've taken the opportunity to go play in Australia, Virginia United, right? And tell us a little bit about how that came about. Like coming to Australia to begin with or with yeah, yeah, my current yeah. season? Um, I think for me, before I came to Australia, I was playing in Singapore in the local league for five, six years. And I was actually in the Woodlands Wellington team. I mean, yep. we changed name a couple of times, but I was in the same <laughs> squad for a good five years. Um, and I think towards the end, it was more of, can I try and push myself to go even further? I kept on the team um, the last season in 2017 when we finished second yeah. in the WPL and third um, for the Challenge Cup. And I thought after that, I got a bit, I guess, sick and tired of always playing against the same teams. You know, it's quite static back home. Um, so I wanted a change. I wanted a challenge and I kind of just booked a one-way flight and there was a lot of chat and discussion about going overseas before that but I guess I didn't act on it until I decided you know on a winch like hey cheap tickets let's go one-way ticket and then it didn't quite sink in for me because I booked that I think in September and only <laughs> okay. flew in end January but um, towards the end of the year I was like okay I need to get things sorted and I think I've I would never regret the decision coming over because it's a higher standard here. It's more, a lot more physical. I really struggled initially when I came because I was just bouncing off players. Yeah, <laughs> um, oh, I, I, can, I can appreciate that. But it is a higher standard, right? So you feel your yeah. game is, in, is improving just by, by being part of it, yeah? Most definitely. I think the coaching level here is also pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. And I've just learned so much from the few coaches that I've been playing under and coming this year after COVID uh, while well, I was back in Singapore because of COVID last year so I didn't get to play and I was out for knee injury but coming back this year and playing again at this high level I think I really appreciate the opportunity especially now comparing to what's happening in Singapore there's not much going for yeah. the women's scene which is a bit of a shame but yeah. So I mean, you talked about the, the women's football there. I mean, I, I, you, 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 you and I know each other quite well. I know you, 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 you've got some ideas around, around women's football. And I think the biggest thing we've often talked about is just getting more girls playing the game and making it more accessible for the future. And so what do you think, if you were sitting in, in FAS right now, if you were sitting in women's football, what would be the one or two things you would say that Singapore has to do to help women's football in the, in the years to come? I think it's really, we need to increase awareness and increase participation across. Um, it's amazing the number of girls that are playing here from a young age and playing, training two, three times a week, playing in school, even if it's just for fun at a young age, between six to ten, that makes a lot of difference. I think we should increase the number of teams in school. It doesn't have to be competitive. It can be just, you know, recreational. One, once girls, you know, play the game, they enjoy it. They will naturally just continue mm -hmm. playing. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. and just local clubs i think it's comp- like it should be made almost compulsory for let's say sbl clubs to have um women's team i know that's in the mm-hmm. plans but also younger age group not just opens because you need teams you need players feeding up you know mm-hmm. to the opens so Right, you're absolutely, for her, for me, she's actually a trailblazer in women's yeah. football. You're going out there, you know, you're getting out of your comfort zone. Not many women are doing that. So keep doing what you do, Pris. We're all supporting you from back here in Singapore. Yeah, really. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I follow every match on your, on your social media. Yeah. Really an inspiration to a lot of the ladies here. Yeah. And thank you for taking your time out today to join us, Pris. We really appreciate that. Stay safe, take care, and we'll see you soon, yeah? Thank you. Now, before we give away the big, big prize today, let's go one last time to some of our very special pundits to hear who they think is going to win this big final. Well, unfortunately, I don't think football is going to be coming home anytime soon. I think Italy will be too strong for England. Uh, in uh, Bonucci and Chiellini, I think they're two superb centre-backs, experience, and uh, I don't think the English forwards will get past them. I think uh, in Chiesa and Immobile, they have two superb forwards as well. So I think it'll be 2-0 Italy and uh, good night, England. Well, my predictions for Euro 2021 finals, Italy 3, England 2, perhaps after extra time. Um, I guess you will hear no end of it if England wins. And I, I was watching the interview by Schmeichel um, during the lead up to the game and he was asked whether you know, he's coming home. And I thought his response was very apt. Has it ever come home? Um, but uh, I'd say the England team has been looking good. Italy has been very steady, but I'm um, going for 3-2 Italy. Hi, hi, everybody in Singapore. This is Neil Ray's uh, brother here. Now the Euros are getting excited. England are in the final against Italy. So my prediction will be England 2, Italy 1. Okay, I think it's going to go to extra time. England will win in extra time like they did against Denmark, so England 2, Italy 1, after extra time, make sure I get it right, um, I'm going to say, who will score the goals, I don't care, as long as England win 2-1, come on England! Hi everyone in Singapore, it's Paul Walsh here, hope you're well, um, England, Italy, well, England 2, Italy 1, after extra time is going to be my uh, shout. Um, I don't think the team are going to be changed too much. There's only one or two positions up for grabs. Uh, Maybe that right-sided position that's already been rotated several times. Um, I wish we would play with one more forward passing midfielder, but I can't see that happening. But anyway, I still think we're strong enough defensively and we've got enough going forward to win the game 2-1. Hi, this is Mickey Gray, ex-Sunderland, ex-England. Hello to all the Singapore fans. My prediction for the Euro 2020 final is unfortunately Italy 2, England 1 after extra time. I hope I'm wrong. Come on, England. Hi, Singapore. Hope you're all well. I'm Teddy Sheridan, as you can see. Uh, My prediction for the final, England 1, Italy 0. I think it's going to be a very tight game, but I think it'll be quite entertaining. More entertaining than the Danish game was. So, uh, and I hope my main man, Harry Kane, scores that winning goal for us. Good luck, everyone. And now is the moment you've been waiting for. As I like to say on this show, we are giving away signed Kylian Mbappe boots, one of the stars of football, even though, you know, France got eliminated. This is how you can win the boot. You have to answer this question. How many goals did Mbappe score at these Euros? And please put your answers at the bottom of this post. We're not looking anywhere else. Only this post if you want to stand a chance to win these beautiful boots of his. Yep, and you've got to get it in the comments within the next 24 hours. So by 8 p.m. on Monday evening, in the comments, yep. one entry per person for a chance to win that boot. And that really wraps up our last episode here. But before we go, firstly, just to say thank you to all the fans you've been supporting us. We really appreciate it. We've had nearly 400,000 views of our eight episodes and so much comments, so much feedback. But we're not gone. We heard you. We heard you say that you want more. And so we are taking over the center circle. Season two coming up soon with the start of the domestic football calendar. And we'll be covering not only the English Premier League, 
La Liga, the Champions League, even the SPL and women's football as well. It's going to be a show about football with all the giveaways, the competitions, the audience participation. The skills challenge as well. A new <laughs> skills challenge yeah. and all the top quality guests that you expect from us. So stay tuned to our IG and our Facebook page over the next couple of weeks as we bring you more information on the Centre Circle, including... That's right, a chance to win, right? A jersey, a signed Singapore national team jersey. In fact, you guys have to stay tuned to our Facebook, Instagram page to find out how to win this because we're only going to give this out on the Centre Circle. Yep, it's been signed by every studio guest we've had here, plus even some other superstar footballers, including Fandi. And you can only win it by watching the show. Absolutely, I'm super excited. And don't forget, last chance for last goal scorer get in there right now separate post not on this feed your last goal scorer get it in before kickoff tonight ready for england to win euro 2020 and at that point ash we're done right that's right it's been fantastic hosting this with you james as well as the euros in general forza guys it's coming home <laughs>